What's up, disruptors and curious minds? Welcome to another episode of Thinking on Paper. It is Thursday, various times across the world where I'm sitting in Atlanta, Georgia. It is 1030. It is far earlier for our guest, which we are very grateful. Mr. Mark Fielding, how are you doing today? What's happening in your world? Um, I'm amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, a great week, a great day. Good to be alive. Um, I wanted to start today's show talking about opportunity because I think today's guest and the platform that he's representing is a is an opportunity um web3 opportunity more specifically i've had i've been the the lucky recipient of a lot of it myself a lot of writing opportunities a lot of creative opportunities and i mean just last week i was actually invited to taiwan for a four day workshop i'm writing the game story for a computer game and they want somebody on the ground there and like crazy opportunities which didn't exist before amazing and i think that today's guest justin and storyco his platform and there are some others um some storyverse and quest of evolution and adamverse and there are others i just the ones i'm aware of represent a real opportunity for writers and creators to to get their work out there to create on a new kind of a new web3 playing field and i'm very excited to to hear more about it Amazing. Likewise. And speaking of opportunity, uh, thinking on paper is brought to you by Jeremy and Mark. Uh, Mark is a brilliant writer, a synthesizer of tech. Uh, I live at the world of uh, tech brand entertainment for a long, long time. I love solving big, complex problems. We're happy to be here. And without further ado, Mark, why don't you introduce our guest? Yes, thank you. So our guest this week is Justin Alanis, um, founder and CEO of StoryCo. Um, Justin's a, a tech entrepreneur, an angel investor focused in Web3 and crypto. He's the founder of DAOs. Um, but that's not why we invited Justin on today, is it, Jeremy? We invited Justin on for StoryCo. And I'm going to read a post that Justin wrote on LinkedIn a while ago about StoryCo. Um, this is to quote, our goal is to prove that we can create a new form of content one that allows creators to create, distribute, monetize, and expand a multimedia universe at 10x the speed and 5% of the cost of other premium formats and do it in a way that is more engaging to fans. Now, if that doesn't sound like something that we're interested in, Jeremy, I don't know what does. So yeah, welcome, Justin. Thanks, guys. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Should we, Jeremy, should we start with maybe if just expand a little bit on your background and then I think... The first question of us in terms of Storyco is why Web3? Yeah, um, amazing. Uh, happy to dive more into my background and Storyco and why Web3. But I think the why Web3 is really links to my background. Uh, I come from a more traditional background, maybe a little bit more, more like you, Jeremy, where I built a technology company and started in 2013. Uh, it was acquired in 2018. I started to see all the innovation that was happening in and around Silicon Valley, moved here. Uh, and in 2018, I started to see a new frontier uh, after the acquisition, um, which was Web3. Uh, I had heard about it. I hadn't really dove very deeply into it. I had invested a little bit in Bitcoin and Ethereum. That was the extent of my exposure and experience. And uh, my cousin, I'm, I'm grateful and, and thankful that my cousin is a founder in the space with a company called Audius. It's one of the most successful consumer applications on the blockchain. Uh, and so I pinged him. I said, hey, I'm a free agent now. I, I need to go explore this space. Uh, the smartest people I know are starting to enter into. I need to figure out what's going on here. And so I got involved in a bunch of decentralized organizations, DAOs, uh, as Mark said. I started investing in the space. I started meeting founders. I started really understanding the underlying ethos of what the space represented, which was new ownership models and new access models. And to me, that was really powerful, right? Because I'd come from these industries that were very closed ecosystems where the ability to enter into those ecosystems was really difficult. And if we could create a new way, a new internet to allow new access and new ownership for people who didn't necessarily have those opportunities historically, that's a really powerful new paradigm. And, um, and with StoryCo, my brother also saw this within Hollywood, uh, how closed and entrenched that ecosystem is. Um, and, and it was our two kind of collective experiences that, found, that led us to founding StoryCo. 
Um, and Web3 offers kind of one of the frontier technologies that we're leveraging at StoryCo that allows for new membership models, new access models, new ownership models that we feel are incredibly important for creators to be able to leverage and fans to be able to leverage as well. Well, Justin, you've already uh, brought in the the tech Web3 audience. Mr. Hunter Newby is on the line. He's He's been in the tech space for a while and similarly transitioned to to where we are and in, in what we're doing um i want to i want to start before we get into to storico i want to make sure we have tons of time for that because i'm fascinated with your approach and what you've done thus far with it um you've got a great list of investors and partners uh in this in this organization and with this new technology this new paradigm this new internet there are a lot of ideas that come out and you know, getting an idea to like something executable backed by backed by you know investment. How, what do you think resonated most about Storyco with this with this group of investors? I think it's a couple of things. Number one, with any early stage company, you have to start with the founders and the founding team. And um, you know, given the fact that I had ran a tech company before, grown it from zero, uh, it was acquired, uh, proved that I was able to scale and grow a tech business. That's number one. My brother uh, has a tremendous background in production in Hollywood, where he worked for Lionsgate. Then he worked with Tyler, the creator, um, creating his direct-to-consumer uh, multimedia app called Golf Media, where they did... Uh, they created a bunch of short form videos and, and, and films that, that laddered up into premium television. Uh, they, they had a merch line, um, and they'd had all these experiences for Tyler's fans. And so it was a really incredible way for him to see just how rich the experience can be with creators when you tap into their fandom. And that was a tremendously successful, uh, experience for him. And the fact that we're brothers, I think, helped as well. And we brought a lot of J JP's team over from uh, his previous ventures as well. So we started with kind of this core, amazing team of technologists, of product designers and builders, experience, uh, people who were focused on the experience design. Uh, and, you know, connections always help as well, right? Um, but uh, from, a, from, a, from an actual company perspective, I think what really resonated with people is that we're tackling a massive opportunity here. Right, the premium content space in general is a five hundred billion dollar annual revenue space, um, and yet you've seen this the, the this what's happened historically with UGC with user generated content on platforms like um, TikTok and and Instagram that are happening with things like Patreon where fans and content creators want to get closer to one another, want to cut out the middlemen, want to be able to monetize directly their 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 uh fans sorry you're gonna guys are gonna meet bandito here uh, awesome. um and uh and, and now but with premium content that's never really existed right premium content you've never had the fans have an opportunity to participate in the content itself whether it's through setting the direction or helping the directors or the actors or whatever it may be or being part of the creative process that's never happened before and so us being able to say we're building out this technology that allows for fans and creators to be a part of this process and anybody to be a part of this process is super powerful and if we can be disruptive to the existing legacy streaming services which i think have ran their course where you look at historical data and 97% of creators within Hollywood today are upset or not happy with the system, right? You look at the nepotism, you look at what's happened with Harvey Weinstein historically, it's just a broken system. And so if you say, this is this huge, massive broken system over here, and we can recreate this system over here, um, that represents a massive opportunity for investors. And so that's, I think, what got them interested ultimately. Awesome. Yeah. I think there's that, the, the problems with the 97% of the industry of creators are, I, I think we can even be more emotive. They're angry and they're pissed off, aren't they? I mean, the money's not fair. The distribution of wealth is not fair. The, the ownership of the IP isn't there. They're not getting the recognition, like all of the things, which I mean, and these are creative people who, you know, they have an ego that needs stroking sometimes. And I think that this is a, a way to kind of not level the playing field, like create a new a new domain, a new space for them. A absolutely. Um, you know, if you think about what Hollywood is, it's just a network of people, right? You've got producers, you've got actors, you've got writers, you've got VFX specialists, you've got sound effects specialists, right? And it's people that are coming together and creating a tapestry of art that 
that all of a sudden merges into something really interesting and creative that people can consume. Uh, and as you said, Mark, today, the distributors, these big streaming platforms, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Apple, like these are the biggest companies in the world right now. And, and the streaming, the actual streaming platforms themselves, the unit economics, they don't really work, right? We're starting to see this breaking all over the place. We have a writer strike right now uh, where people are, 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 fighting for more rights, more ownership, more acknowledgement uh, over their art, right? The journey of a Hollywood creator is one that is just like super tough, right? You go into Hollywood, you have to move to Hollywood, you have to get an agent, you have to get a manager, you have to like get in a, a, an early, per you have to be early in a writer's room and then maybe your, your pilot can be picked up and then it's canceled after season one. And then uh, you don't have any connection to the fans who actually consume that content because the streamers own all of the, the the connection to the fans themselves. And so you have to like pick it up, create something new, sell it to a streamer, and you don't own any of it. Also, the streamers own 100% of that in perpetuity across the world because of the way that streaming works and the internet works today. Uh, and so, you know, how, we asked ourselves a question, how do you create a better system? A system that you said earlier, Mark, um, creates this connection with the fans and the community uh, in, in uh, a, a way in which fans and creators can enter into that system more seamlessly. It becomes more egalitarian in, in its approach where anybody can come in, can, can contribute creative ideas to that production and get ownership ultimately in, in uh, that production as well. And it starts as like an, a piece of IP, but the extensions of the IP are really where all the money comes from. It's the merch, it's the games, it's the, yeah, maybe laddering into TV and movie, but AI is changing that as well, right? Where now the production quality of some of this stuff is like going down to zero uh, or, or the production quality is going way high and, the, and, the, and the, how hard it is is going down to zero, right? Yeah, so they, anybody can create, be a creator now. Absolutely. We've, we've got some great questions coming in, but but first I think the analogy I always like to use, Justin, is that instead of having this giant highway that only a group of people own access to, meaning how the content gets out, right? Now we're building roads. We're building roads between the creators and the fans, and we're automating the access to those and monetizing that in a really cool way. I, I love the reinvention. Like philosophically, it's really, really cool. Um, we got a question here. I'm going to pop it up on the screen. Uh, from Tom, one of our one of our longtime viewers, uh, what skill sets, Hi, what skill sets do creators and writers in his case need to bring to the space or to Storyco to to be successful? Right. So, uh, is it is it different? Is it new? Is it just a reapplication of similar skill sets? You know, I think one of the things about Hollywood today is that um, it, it's becoming formulaic, right? Where they're like, we need you to write about this. You write this thing. It goes to some, you know old white dude in a, in a, behind a desk. And he's like, no, I, here's, here's all my notes of like, here's what you cannot say. Here's what you, it, this doesn't fit my formula. This doesn't fit my agenda. And he passes it back to you. The thing about Storyco is that we want creativity to flourish. We think that the best stories are going to come from this like unleashing of creativity uh, where community and fans can, can coalesce and interact with one another and be like, this is so freaking cool. Let's take it maybe over here. What do you think about this? That's where I think, creativity really can be harnessed. So in our situation within Storyco, you, know, you just need to bring your creative skill set to the table. We are starting um, engaging creators. So, so let me back up a little bit. The way we're starting our platform is we're building a production called The Disco Ball. It's being written by an A-list Hollywood writer named Kyle Killen, uh, who who has seen kind of the cracks of the system. All these writers have seen the cracks of these systems, and so they're really intrigued and interested to come in. We're coupling him with these amazing artists named Shelby and Sandy, uh, who are very celebrated um, Hollywood artists, uh, and then we're coupling them with our musicians named Superposition. They're Grammy nominated musicians. They're creating the core, the corpus of the disco ball, basically the first 10 chapters, the written elements, the, 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 the backgrounds and the settings and um, uh, all of that from Shelby and Sandy and all the scoring and the sound effects from uh, Superposition. So we believe that you can, when you create this kind of core of, of uh, the IP, 
that then all of a sudden people can come in from the community and start to add on to this because they understand how the world operates, how the world works, how the characters move within that world. And what are stories ultimately? What are these, what are universes? Well, they're just worlds, right? They're, if you look at Marvel or Star Wars, they're just worlds and any story can be told in those worlds. And so the idea behind all of our stories within StoryCo is that we're building worlds and not just us, but the community can ultimately build their own new world as well. We're not there yet, but the idea is that we want to prove out the technology with the disco ball and then invite creators in to start extending the disco ball and adding in all of the substrate, basically all of the, the interesting uh, information and art and all of that within the disco ball as well. So we started with our first creative bounty. Um, with, we call them co-creation opportunities with an amazing artist out of Nigeria named Anu. Uh, and he, he responded to a bounty, won the bounty, uh, got paid a little bit of money for that. And then he's getting ownership in the disco ball. And he's now featuring his art. This is a guy, 21-year-old art student in Lagos, Nigeria, who probably never would have been able to enter the Hollywood ecosystem historically. And now his art is being featured alongside Kyle Killen's writing, uh, Shelby and Sandy's main art. And, um, and we have amazing A-list actors that are voicing the characters that are featured in his art. And so this is being released in a couple of weeks. And so we're releasing a bunch of new co-creation opportunities that are coming up. So these are the kind of the top-down opportunities. But then eventually we're, we're releasing tooling so that anybody can create like new and interesting stories in a very UGC fashion on the platform. So if you have a character that you love and you want to create a whole new side story or like kind of like the Mandalorian within Star Wars for that character, you're going to have the ability to do that. That's, that's is that really going to be um, the ground up? Is that going to be completely up to the creator there's, gonna, there's not going to be prompts or worlds that exist it's going to be a clean slate yeah so there's there's going to be two ways that you can do ground up you can create a whole new world like let's say like a super node right on the network i have a new idea a new story a new universe that i want to be able to tell i want to i want to attract fans i want to monetize those fans i want to get a creative group together divvy up ownership of that world and i need a sound person and i need a an artist and I'm a writer. And so like, that's what the Storyco platform is meant to do. But then if you want to create an extension off of an existing world, you should be able to do that as well. And you can create maybe like the, a script for the Mandalorian, publicize that and get people to help you edit it, help you, you know, nurture it, get a sound person to come in and be like, I, I really want to create the score for this and get a voice actor to come in and say, I can do this character. And then all of a sudden the production starts to take form. And the way that we're trying to release these is in a more digitally native fashion. So it's not like a movie, it's not a TV show, but it's more like a, uh, an immersive 3D animatic almost where you can create and render these 3D environments and then have these storyboards that then are expressed within that environment in certain situations and the camera kind of moves around it. It's a very interesting, um, amazing way that we think is like the step right before what you do before you made a TV or movie, right? A TV show or movie, um, but it's not actually a TV show or a movie yet, but it's all the components that you would want. But as you as the content is building, the community is building, right? So it's a dual emergent nature of of content and right. community. And and instead of waiting and saying, all right, let's I hope this thing lands and spend a million millions of dollars right. and it comes out and maybe it doesn't, it's kind of like you're you're temp checking and you're building and you're growing the whole time, which is super cool. Yeah, it's super powerful, right? And this is the power of these network effects that happen on platforms like this. We're just starting to see them take hold now. Um, yeah. But you, you see it within like Roblox or Steam, for example, where they're giving you the tools to create within their ecosystem. Fans become creators. Creators then bring more fans in and it creates this really beautiful flywheel effect with these kind of UGC platforms um, and, and deep and embedded network effects because you can test and iterate ideas you can, uh, you, creators can become fans and you're lowering the barrier of entry ultimately for, uh, for all of that. I love that. I've noticed that, that Jeremy, you mentioned about like the egalitarian equality of it and how it connects fans to, to creators, but it also create connects creators to other creators. And like, like the network effect that Justin has mentioned, and I've seen this happening whereby a, a few months, even, even a few months ago, like finding your collaborators finding the other writer finding the animator finding the sound person whoever you want was almost as difficult as like breaking down the ivory town getting into hollywood like and now everyone's kind of grouping in these small i mean there's not many of them a handful of these platforms aren't they which gives 
again, like the flywheel that Justin mentions to, to the creative process, it's brilliant. J Justin also, uh, Gabriel, another longtime listener, uh, has invented a new potential role for you as word dancer. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it. you were amazing. It's one of my LinkedIn. With the words. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I wanted to wanted to note, uh, call attention to is the team you put together for, for um, Disco Ball. I'm not sure if it's the same group. I'm pretty sure Superposition was involved in an early Web3 experiment called The Song That Owns Itself. I don't know if you've ever uh, ran I into that. that. It's, yeah, uh, they have a song called The God's Particle. I pretty, I'm pretty sure it's these guys, but it, it's basically putting something out as a living, breathing thing to interact. It was an early experiment. It was super cool, but it's really awesome to hear that they're they're on board as well. I mean, they're obviously super talented musicians and and, and uh, composer producers, but uh, yeah, really cool, amazing. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of the a lot of the creators that want to. We we went through this like whole tour of Hollywood, like of talking to these amazing writers. Like we we went really down the down deep with the guys who wrote uh, the last Spider Man, uh, amazing Spider Man movie. Right, it was like top three box office of all time, and all these creators are super interested in creating in new ways, right? They, they, they see how broken the system is that they're not getting ownership, even though they're creating, you know, number three top box office hit of all time. Uh, and, and, and number two, they want to create in new ways, right? People want to create in new and experimental ways and see how they can like tap into a fan base in really cool ways. Right. And so that's what really attracted us to, to Kyle because he was kind of already in web three. He was experimenting with it and he was like, I've got this idea where we can make the fans a central character in the actual thing and like this is only possible with web3 so let's do this and so that's kind of disco ball has this underlayer called debris disco ball research and investigation society which is like this hidden secret society that if you're a fan of the disco ball you become a part of debris and you solve puzzles and clues it's almost like an active alternative reality game that 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 goes alongside the disco the disco ball core and main narrative and you as a fan can actually like uh, uh, you can influence the way that the story goes, which is very cool. So this is this is like I, I don't think anyone's done this yet. So I always reference there there are a few collaborative storytelling platforms, but what you're doing and what you're doing so quickly with it is this really involved potential nod to choose your own adventure back in the day. I always reference those old books, page six, go to the rocket ship, page eight, play with a cat, right? Whatever. But this whole debris society, I went through the, I watched the video. I so engaging and so like, it's almost like some real stuff is happening. Like you're in it. Like, have you checked it out, Mark? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've checked it out. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, as you say, it's um, a new way, a new a new way to tell stories and. But also, but also incremental involvement too, which is interesting. A lot of some other some other platforms have like created these stories and like, hey, your participation is going to fund the production of this story. That's uh, have you gone, Jeremy? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, Jeremy. Yeah, I, think, I, I think I think he left, but I've got a I've got a quick. Uh, response to that, which is, you know, we, we believe strongly that like it, the creators have a problem over here, right. With, with Hollywood. Um, but the fans also have a problem with Hollywood, right? Like the, the problem with Hollywood is that they're this, like, th they're this interceptor. They're this middleman, this gatekeeper that keeps fans and creators away from one another. Right. And so as a result of that, fans are an untapped resource historically, uh, where, you know, I think Disney probably does the best job of it today because they have the theme parks where they can actually tap into uh, fandom in a little bit more of an experiential way. But, you know, ultimately there is a spectrum of fandom that today is being not harnessed by the majority of these companies. There's the passive consumption, but then there's like the interactive, like super fan consumer that wants to engage a little bit more deeply in the content. There's the people who want to influence the content. There's the people who want to support the creators. There's the people who want to then co-create and there's the people who want to co-own. And it's like this, it's, it's this like a, uh, you know, funnel where the yeah. people who want to co-create and co-own are like at the very bottom of the funnel. It's like maybe 1% or less fewer people, but the people who want to like maybe engage and interact in actually immersive stories is way higher. Right. And this is what Apple's banking on with their spatial computing platform 
right now. And so the opportunity for fans to engage with content in new and immersive and interactive ways is like, it is really powerful. Right. And so we're re really leaning into that from the disco ball because we believe that fans want to have a deeper connection to the content that they love. We've seen this through cosplay. We see it through, you know, fan fiction. We see it through, you know, all, all these other expressions of fandom that are out there today. But how do you then take that and harness it in a way where, where that fandom can actually attach onto the core content and benefit the core content and the IP and make it more valuable over time? And so that's really what we're leaning into with the Disco Ball and giving the, the ability and tools for other creators to be able to do that as well. It, it, with the it's talking about fandom and fan fiction, you, you mentioned... Sorry, are you back, Jeremy? Are you, are you yes, on? yes. I okay. got sucked into the disco ball. I was in one of yeah. the many world interpretations of it, I think. You in space, we swapped. We swapped, <laughs> you, swapped. You, you went to a different dimension for, for a second there. We, we swapped, swapped place on the screen. Um, yeah, with fandom. So you, men you mentioned like the Mandalorian earlier and how you could take, I mean, I, I see um, a copyright issue. Like you can't, how do you can't build these, these fan fiction worlds and then monetize them on the back of these big IPs. So is is the long-term goal to create well the disco ball to create that as an ip and then for a really big ip to be built out of the the storyco foundations which then can be used as an extension by creators yeah that's exactly right right uh you know there's all this energy around fan fiction um fan art and and today that's not harnessed in fact studios actually sue uh, people yes. who create fan fiction and fan art today, right? Like you saw it. I, I don't know if you remember this, but their Bridgerton musical, there was this hit on TikTok that these two women uh, created and, and, and Netflix went and they sued them to take it down. It was like this massive hit on TikTok. Uh, you have the Lightning McQueen car uh, where uh, a dude in his garage built a car that was like identical to Lightning McQueen, right? The car's franchise on Disney and Disney sued him to not have that car right um this is stuff that can add to the ip ultimately like if you're disney why wouldn't you pay this guy to help build this car and make this a thing right or yeah. or pay these women to be part of the bridgerton to create the bridgerton musical and expand and, and add to the ip well it's because they want to tightly control their intellectual property like they don't believe that normal fans like or they're very scared that normal fans are going to like bastardize this ip Right. Um, and we take the opposite approach. We're like the fans are the ones who should be helping grow this IP. Yeah, you're going to have some misses, of course, but you have some misses on TikTok also. Like you have a lot of misses on TikTok. And if you create a, a, a system where the cream rises to the top, where fans can say, oh, this is really cool. This Bridgerton musical is really freaking cool. Like everybody should be should be promoting this thing. Maybe we should be should be funding it. Uh, let's get it out there. This will add to the IP. That's the type of ecosystem that you want to create. That's the type of ecosystem that will that will allow your IP to grow bigger and quicker over time. I, I did a I, I've done some fan fiction myself and I did a I rewrote Reservoir Dogs and I, I published Reservoir, this remake of I wrote the scripts with myself and my family in Reservoir Dogs and I published it. And then not long after, um, um, the um, Tarantino wasn't allowed the rights to Pulp Fiction, which he wrote because like they were so guarded of this IP that he'd wrote that he wasn't allowed to have it because he wanted to do something with NFTs. And I was like, oh my God, I've, I've written this bit of Quentin Tarantino fan fiction and he doesn't even have the rights to his own film like oh my god I better take this down <laughs> well I think yeah, I think totally. I, I think part of it and this goes back to the tech structure of it right and if there's a clear way that the value attribution model is is in place and the tech is really easy to work with um, then a lot of this stuff gets solved really easy but if it's murky and it's difficult and all of that that's where we run into challenges. So Justin, how did you take that your how did you take that approach into the UX and the tech and the interaction yeah. between the creators and all of that? We're still working through that, to, to be very honest with you. So uh, what we're building out is very heavy lift from a tech perspective. Um, and there's multiple components to what we're building out. So the first was uh, we wanted to create the the uh, distribution layer for us, for the Disco Ball, and also for new creators to be able to distribute stories, engage a fan community, right? Make, make creators basically feel like they could monetize like they could create very easily and make them feel loved so that, so that, you know, and, and make them have this connection with their fans. Uh, and so 
we've created the distribution layer, which is this 3D animatic, the ability to, to, to produce a story, the ability to then distribute that story, engage fans in that story. We have this new um, uh, uh, creation called the, it's called the uh, Story Pass. It's a soulbound NFT, which just basically means that it's like your passport into the Disco Ball universe and you collect story moments along your journey. And so the people who engaged early with Debris, Disco Ball Research and Investigation Society, and solved a bunch of the, cl the, the clues and, and the puzzles, uh, they have been getting story moments. And those story moments allow us to track who are our most avid fans who are engaging with this thing in a really interesting way. Uh, and we're going to reward them with very interesting things down the road, right? And so it's a very easy way for us to track behavior and, and track who's engaging with our story and gamify it a bit and, and have a point system. And we just believe that kind of the world's moving towards a gamification model. And so we wanted to really hone in on that. The second piece is, is this co-creation piece where we want uh, the ability to for, for, for creators to bring community in and co-create. And so this is what we talked about, kind of this top-down co-creation model, This the bounties that are being offered, the ability to distribute ownership, have a creator pool of ownership, so that if somebody wins a bounty, they get actually ownership points in the Disco Ball, and they can then help influence the future of the Disco Ball. Uh, so that's we're actually releasing that next week. Uh, then there's this whole like uh, UGC, like my ability to write a, a brand new story, engage audience in that story or engage other creators in that story. That's the next thing that we're building. It's kind of the what we call the content management layer and the network layer of having all these people be able to find one another, connect with one another, and then being able to upvote different things that are happening on the platform. Uh, and so those are, those are the, the, the critical pieces uh, for what we're building. And then, you know, we also think that there's like a huge opportunity for education on the platform as well. And so we're going to be leaning into that long term. Awesome. Okay. Um, I, I think you've got a new addition in Tom. I think Tom wants into StoryCo. So um, do, do you still do producers passes? If our Tom wants to join, what does he have to do? Uh, yeah, we, we are still, we've reserved a few producer uh, tokens uh, for very select people who want to come into our ecosystem and want to contribute. Uh, and so go to StoryCo, go to the little uh, section called producers and fill out an application and, um, uh, and yeah, uh, and we'll get back to you. Awesome. I, I've seen Tom's work. He's, he's the real deal. So get, get on your application, Tom. Amazing. Um, I, I've got a... a a question then so i'm i'm working on a film script it's called teaching english to the mafia it's it's a, a global expansive it'd be very expensive to make this film um and jeremy's doing the music and he's very expensive too so i, I use storyco ground up i bring it in i develop the script i get my fellow writers to build it out with me we get some actors maybe we get some sound how do we fund it well, so we've we've funded the disco ball through our own kind of internal funding mechanisms, right? But the idea is that you should be able to number one lower the barrier of actual uh, uh, f need for funding because it's so easy to create on the platform. The idea uh, with the platform uh, now we've had to build out all this technology with the disco ball kind of from the ground up, and so we've needed all this funding. We've raised six million dollars from uh, venture investors in order to build out that technology, and we spent a little bit of that on production. But it's on like it's on paying people like Kyle and Shelby and Sandy and the actors mostly, right? But it, but the idea is that if you're bringing other people in, you can give them ownership, right? So ownership becomes a currency of your IP. And depending on how much ownership, there's always this flux between either ownership or payment, right? And if you're going to give people dollars, then you're going to have to give ownership to somebody else, right? And maybe it's investors that come in and want to own that piece of IP as an investor. So you can use the currency of money to pay other creators, but why not pay other creators through ownership itself, right? And they come in and they're working on it for sweat equity as well. And so we want to give you the flexibility to be able to do that. So we're lowering the barrier of entry. We're allowing for creators to come together, get ownership in that IP. It's less expensive to make because it's not a full-fledged movie or a TV show. And we're creating the tooling that allows you to get it out there with very little funding, right? Now, the ability to monetize, we're trying to create on the platform as well. Monetization happens in a number of different ways, right? If you think about the way that IP works today, 
we're going to monetize the disco ball through NFTs, through merch, and through licensing opportunities, right? We're basically creating a self-publishing network so that you can self-publish something almost like Substack, and then you can monetize that through a whole different number of ways, right? And so that with the disco ball, we're creating a set of NFTs eventually that will be related and tightly linked to the story. We'll sell those NFTs and give a bunch of those NFTs away to people within our ecosystem who have proven that they're adding value to our ecosystem. And then we're going to create really cool merch opportunities. And then we're also going to license that IP up towards premium television, premium movie, uh, games, uh, you name it. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to monetize this IP ultimately. Yeah, I think uh, two quick highlights I want to I want to shed. Uh, Mark, this ties back to our discussion with uh, Angela Brasington about marketing and interaction. We were we talked about just in this this how do you how do you how do you monitor, manage, and incentivize meaningful interaction? I think what you're doing with this pass and this gamification of it, you're being a, you're able to kind of tell like who's excited and why they're excited and take that group of people and pull them through the journey a little more. I think that's really, really smart way to do it. My yeah. question lies uh, in, cause I, I, I've done a bunch of research and writing on uh, soulbound tokens. I'm really interested in how that selection yeah. of tech um, came about. We love everything soulbound. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the idea of Soulbound is that um, we didn't want, th we wanted the story pass to be a bit more tied to your identity because it's more of a reputation layer um, and a rewards layer for us. Uh, but the core NFTs where, um, it, where where you get dropped an NFT, those will be non-Soulbound because we believe that those should be able to be traded. Those are more, um, uh, you know, le less, less like Soulbound and less reputation layer and more just like, this is a, a really cool collectible or artifact from the fr from uh, the the disco ball universe that has utility also within the disco ball where it actually gives you voting power it, get, it yields power for you over the disco ball universe as a fan right um, and not only that but it's like created by these amazing artists there's going to be really cool rarities and traits associated with them and so we think that there's going to be value in those NFTs as well so we think there's a place for both uh, but what we don't want to have happen is have you do all this work and then all of a sudden like you can sell that it's like it's almost like becoming a boy scout and then being able to sell your eagle scout honors right um, and we just didn't believe that 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 should be the case creates a little more permanence in the in the yeah. audience too the like a longer term play than than just hey you know we're gonna grab this thing and flip it and do whatever where it's a, it's a, it's you're you're I'm you're sorry. buying you're buying a, a piece of the road yeah, it's gen uh, genuine genuine engagement yeah. genuine and excitement and it's 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 genuine yeah yeah and, and you see this problem right now with a lot of existing nft projects where you get a lot of speculators a lot of flippers in um, all they want to do is buy the thing and then make money off of it and that doesn't yield long-term value accretion. Uh, and we really are interested in what Storyco looks like in 10, 20, 30 years, not in six months. Um, and so for us, like that's always our barometer is like, how do we create long-term value and deep and embedded engagement uh, and, and deep fandom? Because we believe that like having a thousand like amazing super fans is way more valuable than having 10,000 speculators. The super fan, yeah, ten thousand fans, a thousand. How many do you need, Jeremy? It depends. Kevin Kelly says a thousand, but you know it could be done cheap, be, be done with less. But uh, what one of the, yeah, this is this is super interesting. I'm totally down, and I think the the projects that excite me the most always have kind of the what I think about as audience infrastructure in mind. You are building audience infrastructure. You're building contributor infrastructure to decentralized storytelling and i think it's i think it's pretty pretty darn amazing so with disco ball i'm a i'm a quantum mechanics nerd as well so i love this whole we reference the many worlds thing so if we have a once once the story is complete right once the narrative is complete after some bounties have happened and all of that at the end of that do we have their disco ball is x and then there is X1, X2, X3, X4 with wherever Mark wants to take it, wherever I want to take it. And then is a new asset created? I mean, the, the, the whole thing is pretty cool that it's like a little bit meta in that the story is what the thing is like, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. We believe that these universes never end. Um, these stories never end, right? If, if you look at, um, again, what a universe is, it's just an opportunity to tell any story in that world. And we believe that then there's all sorts of extensions of characters and timelines and backstories and side stories and new dimensions within that universe. And it all becomes this fabric of, of this, this broader universe of the disco ball universe. And so, yeah, we, we just believe that these stories never end and we want to have a, a mechanism to allow for the perpetual telling of new stories within that world. Okay. Question on the on another extension of this, right? So you, you talked about games and, and kind of perpetual worlds that you know this this content comes alive in. Is there a is there a production strategy that you guys are thinking about to make sure all of that stuff is enabled down the road? Simple example, like Unreal Engine, Unity, like how much stuff is being built in that mechanic versus kind of traditional linear processes. Yeah. Um, so we, we've, we have created this, this 3d rendering engine. We've created our own 3d render rendering engine. It's a scroll based platform. So you can just press play and it just like scrolls down the page and you have almost like a comic book, like the, all the narratives pop into place and it, it looks different for voice versus actual narrative. Um, and we just didn't think that unreal engine or unity was the right platform for us to be able to utilize. Cause those are a little bit more like they look a little bit more like videos. Um, and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to create our own 3d rendering engine. Um, and so it's been a big lift, but we've gotten there and it's, it's pretty freaking cool. So Mark, you'll get a taste of it as a producer token member. We'd love to get your feedback. We're, we're going to be dropping it to the producer token members next week. Um, and yeah, we just showed it to our investors the other day. They're like, holy shit, like this is really, really freaking cool. Um, like I had no idea this is what you guys are actually building, you know? So like we've, we've gone above and beyond in terms of the interaction and the way that the story actually looks and feels. Awesome. I look forward to that. Amazing. Mark, so are you going to be writing on this platform soon? What are you, what's your take? So, so I'll, I'll tell you my story about this. So I, I have the producer's token and but I, I came in the, the, the last round, I think it was. So maybe a month, six weeks ago. So I missed the start of the disco ball. So when I came into it, I, I, I'm a, a, an observer at the moment, but definitely that I will, as soon as the, what did you call it from I, I, it's the grassroots it's the bottom up that i'm interested in personally cool. so as soon as that is open then but i am in the awesome. discord there's a lot of interesting people in the discord some of the channels are really cool there's a lot of w way to read other people's work show your own work kind of have conversations i like the discord channel and yeah as soon as that grassroots is open i'll be in there cool. teaching english to the well, mafia jeremy um, amazing well as we love to be able to think through what that actually looks like, right? Because we're building it out. We're building out all the UX um, layer now. And so, Mark, let's have a conversation at some point and just think about like as a, as a new creator on the platform, what are the elements that, that are like necessary from an MVP uh, component? We'd love to get your feedback on that for sure. For sure, yeah. Hit me up. I'd be interested. And you, Jamie, what about me? Like I'm writing on everything, Jamie, literally. Like I spend my life, like I have to pay the bills, don't forget. And this is one, okay, this is one of my thought that I had earlier about I, I, at the beginning I spoke about opportunity and the web three opportunity for writers and creators and I think it's unparalleled and I, I see this as almost like the second phase whereby the early the opportunity two three years ago was just being in the space and like opportunity was everywhere and now there's much more more people in it now you have this second phase which is these platforms for one of a word that give the opportunity and I write for many of them. I'm in many of them, but I still got to pay the bills. So, you know, I've got, <laughs> it has to be balanced out between kind of my writing passion and my, my day job, which, you know. It I makes sense. Well, it, it takes a while to, to build new frameworks for stodgy yeah. calcified systems that no longer. Stodgy calcified system. I like that. That, that no longer serve yeah. the per participants, right? And, and Justin, you're well on your way to, to doing something amazing in that regard. Uh, closing thoughts, because I want to be mindful of time. Uh, on for, for writers and story lovers, right? So we'll look at it from both perspectives uh, that, that, that want to get involved in something like this, but they're still like, Oh, that's that crazy, weird crypto stuff that happened before. And I'm a little sketched out about it. How do you, 
What's your message to them on, on getting them comfortable and over the hump? Um, as, as the book behind Mark says, NFTs are a scam. Um, you know, it's, it's totally the, uh, the, 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 the daily thought or the monthly thought or the annual thought of, of what's happening in the NFT space for sure. Um, and within the crypto space for sure. Um, and so, you know, yeah, there you go. No, you gotta, you gotta reverse your camera, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, but I, I think that number one, most of those projects um, that feel scammy, you got to remember that they've they 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 don't have a team that's public, right? They're like behind the scenes. They um, they're they're anonymous or pseudonymous, um, and and that represents, in my my opinion, danger for for the average investor. Number number two, they started with like a bunch of NFTs uh, and sold those to consumers with a promise of something in the future. And that doesn't really work too well, especially when you don't know the founders and their pedigree and whether they're doing something cool and, and worthwhile. Um, and they haven't proven anything out. Um, they some, some of these projects have raised hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Like 150. You saw yesterday Azuki drop their new NFT. They had raised 50 million dollars, and everybody was just like devastatedly disappointed with it, right? Uh, and um, and this breeds this this kind of culture of like NFTs are a scam because this type of shit happens all the time. Well, for us, we're kind of trying to prove it before we before we even try to like take a dollar from anyone right it's like we're building out a platform we're building out a fucking cool production we're getting a list a listers around the whole thing and yeah we're not going to be this like speculative speculative thing so like sorry but like if you want to come here and just make a dollar like that's we're not your place like but if you want to come in and you want to think about long-term value and how you can contribute to this ecosystem and how you can be a, a, a create a hopefully multi 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 billion dollar franchise and 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 platform with us over over a twenty year period. We're your place, right? And we're not anonymous. We have a proven track record. And so I would say, look for projects like that. Get involved with projects like that. Um, and I think more people are starting to wake up to that. But Web three, we think about it as like a substrate infrastructure technology similar to the way ai works and we're not really leading with like a bunch of web 3ness like we're not like we're a web 3 big web 3 company in fact we rebranded away from story dow to story co because we're like web 3 represents a core technology a core piece of technology that we're using but it's not like who we are at our core like you know uh just like we're using ai just like we're using spatial computing right just like we're using user generated content the creator economy like all these things represent Storyco and Web3 is one of those pieces. And we think it's like a very interesting and, and legitimate piece of technology that creates new ownership and access models. And it's very important to us, but we're not necessarily like we're this big Web3 company um, as a result of that. 100% resonates with me, not just with what you just talked about, but what I've seen from all the stuff you're doing. I think you're doing it, doing it the right way. This audience, if this infrastructure approach, right? Um, so I, I, for one, I'm going to continue to check out what you're doing. Cause I was, I was Thanks, fully Jeremy. enthralled with, uh, with the participatory access, uh, that, that you're bringing to a lot of this stuff. But, uh, Justin, thanks so much for, for joining thanks, us today. I know it's this early bird out there. Hopefully it was good kickoff to your morning, Mark. Perfect. Any other thoughts from your side? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. And I, I like hearing what Justin was saying. It reminded me of when we had Corrales on who was talking about, culture and blockchain and culture and tech and how it the culture we have to get the culture right and i think this is just a, a, an example of kind of putting the culture first putting the storytelling first and getting shit done in a in a cool new way so yeah uh, follow us on twitter hit our come into our discord be a part of our community we welcome anyone and everyone so we're excited to see y'all and we've got some big things planned and if you get involved I promise you that you won't be disappointed. So yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it, guys. Awesome. Cool, and all the, all the listeners out there too, uh, check us out on thinkingonpaper.xyz. You can get our all of our old shows and footage out there. Got a question, got a thought, got a great guest. Hit us up. We'll try and, uh, try and wrangle something fun together. But thanks for joining. Yeah. We will see you next week. See Just you next week. Guys. Bye. Later.